Hi guys, Hallie Happoween here. So today I want to do this uh, unboxing of the new Keyforge um, two-player starter set for the new Age of Ascension set. So I received this box from uh, Asmodee uh, Netherlands, uh, free of charge. They gave it to me so I can do an unboxing online and uh, see what's what are the contents. So I hope you guys will find it interesting. So let's have a check, right? Alright, so let's open up the box, let's see what's in there. Uh, at first glance the box is a bit smaller than the original uh, Call of the Archons box, so let's see what gives. Alright. Cool, cool. So, here we have our uh, little rule book, I guess. So it's, uh, it's a quick start guide. I think we had the same one in, or something similar in the Call of the Archons original box okay so an overview set up how to play winning the game we all know that right so a quick start guide seems solid okay yeah so this was something that I was really um, interested in and that's the uh, folded paper play mat so we have a red one here okay so let's get this box out of the way for a second and let's see how that fits because this is my Volter play mat Let's see how it fits, right? Okay, so it's folded like this. Okay, let's put it down. Seems to fit a little bit the uh, the real player mats. So that seems quite nice, right? So you have your battle line here. It's uh, slightly visible here. The artifacts, a cool sanctum looking guy, place for your keys. Uh, Archon, draw deck, discard and an archive. Looks really, really nice. This is not my usual setup, but I like it. Looks good, looks good, all right. And actually, I must say the quality of the paper is quite good. It's not it's not really thick, but it's, it's okay, right? It's okay, looks good. And then here we have the blue one, right? So I'll just show that one to you guys. Oh, that one is cool, okay. So this one has this uh, the Stim Rager guy, I think, new uh, a new guy for uh, the House Mars. This one looks cool. I like that one. I like the fact that they included this. I think it's much better. It's much more fun than those ridiculous um, um, starter decks that nobody uses. And then we have all this stuff, right? So let's get that into the picture. So we've got all of the. Uh, the tokens, the original tokens. So let's pop that, those out and then we'll, uh, we'll get to the next part. Alright, so now you can see all of the components. So here we have, uh, this is a very nice addition. Here we have the stun tokens, right? So it looks like this. It's quite nice because uh, you immediately notice that a lot of people needed these. Um, then we have here our amber tokens. We have uh, our chain trackers, some damage tokens. And then here are key tokens. Uh, the plus one power counters, these are really nice. Before you had these stun cards, but nobody was really using them anyway. And we have um, some chain trackers. These chain trackers are quite nice. They're a lot more studier. So you can see they are uh, made out of carton this time, not just the uh, flimsy cards. So these are quite, quite strong, that's good. Um, and another thing that you will immediately notice is that they made all of the components a little bit smaller. So this is a, a red key. Um, of the Age of Ascension set and this is the uh, red key in the um, Call of the Archon so they made it a little bit smaller I'll put it up here so you can see it right not really a big deal it seems that they did this for all of the counters you also see this is your uh, your regular this uh, the new size amber tokens and here you have the the old ones so they also have been made a little bit smaller um, and the same for the damage tokens, they're also a little bit smaller. But that doesn't really matter. 
the components look great it's all uh, very nice so now for the second part of course we need to open these two decks and we're going to check what we get in here all right this is my second age of ascension deck that i'm about to open i opened one for um i opened one for what was it um the launch party we did a a sealed launch party so okay let's have a look what we've got here we've got poison apple vogel island toy maker <laughs> i like it um especially the poison apple it's a sanctum logos mars deck and i really like these new designs this is a new design or at least a design that i've never seen before all right let's try to open up this damn plastic all right here we go so let's open it up there we go let's remove the starting card put it over here and let's see what we have so we're starting out with sanctum okay so we have our first sanctum creature prince derek unifier never seen this one before so probably a lot of cards that i haven't seen before uh, so a four power one armor creature with a playability gain three amber if you control creatures from three different houses that's quite nice. I've seen this kind of mechanic before. I think they also have this free market card. Also really nice. So gain three amber if you control creatures from three different houses. And the subtext says, ah, excellent. My father will be pleased. Very nice, really nice design. Okay, let's go for the second. Ooh, here it is. That, I was, that was a card I was talking about, free markets. So in my first Age of Ascension deck that I opened, I have this card as well. So it's really cool. Gain one amber to a maximum of six. For each house represented among cards in play, except for Sanctum, right? So that's quite nice. And the except for Sanctum is quite important because with my previous deck I had good board control with Sanctum, but it was difficult to get my other creatures on the board. So you sometimes you have this card in your hand for some time. And of course the two a maximum of six is quite an important limit, I think. Because yeah, who knows how many houses they'll uh, they'll add in the future and maybe if you're playing with three or four players in one game this could be really really nasty so but i really like this card the the art is simple but i like the card a lot all right here we have an oldie but a goodie doorstep to heaven so each player with six or more amber is reduced to five really good card gives you an amber really nice we know this one take hostages that's another one that we know so I'm gonna collect the action cards here, creature cards here. For the remainder of the turn, each time a friendly creature fights, it captures one amber. Nice card. We have two of them, that's fine. So hopefully we also have enough uh, creatures to do something with that. At least we already have three amber just off the bat from cards. So a four power two armor creature, Sir Maros. After your opponent gains amber by reek bring, Sir Maros captured it. All amber is ours by right. Really nice card, really fits the house theme. Love it. Then we have Maruk the Marked. So I have this in my other deck as well. Five power, one armor creature. After Maruk the Marked prevents damage with its armor, capture one amber for each damage just prevented. So this could be really interesting if you can get some extra armor on him, right? In some way. Here we have a hallowed shield, it's an artifact, action. Choose a creature, for the remainder of the turn, the chosen creature cannot be dealt damage, right? I think there was an action card like that in uh, Call of the Archon. Okay, we have two of those hallowed sh shields, so that's, uh, that's strong. So our, uh, our sanctum creatures are not getting uh, any damage, apparently. Oh wow, okay, we have three of those. I don't, I think that was I think that's a little bit of an overkill, but okay, that's fine. We'll see what we can do with, with three of these artifacts while we only have three uh, Sanctum creatures up till now. Then we have Golden Aura, an action. Play, choose a creature, fully heal the chosen creature. For the remainder of the turn, its chosen creature is considered to be in-house Sanctum and cannot be dealt damage. So that's actually quite cool. 
right? So you could actually use this golden aura to choose a creature, heal it, and then for example, it's considered to be of the house sanctum and cannot be dealt damage. And I was thinking maybe you can combine it with Hell of Shield, but it doesn't really matter because it already can't be targeted by damage. So a lot of uh, damage negation here. Okay, good, good. So at least we have another uh, creature. Abalt the Grim, four power and one armor. Play, capture three. Reap, discard one amber from Abal the Grim. This is a really nice card because up till now you could capture amber, but you were not able to, to do something with it, right? And this actually allows you when you reap, you gain an amber and you remove one of the captured ambers. So that's, that's nice. I really like that card. Okay, so the rest is, um, then we get to House Mars. So let's have a quick recap. We've got, um, we've got four Sanctum creatures, Prince Derek, Sir Maros, Maruk the Marked and Abad the Grim. They're all good creatures. I think, I think I liked them, right? So we have a way to gain Amber conditionally. We have Sir Maros to capture Amber and we have Maruk the Marked to gain Amber by preventing damage with armor and a baldegrim. So it's fine, it's okay. I think this is a little bit of overkill. We have three hallowed shields, so that's that's like three, sh three uh, artifacts to uh, choose a creature and say that it cannot be dealt damage um, for the remainder of the turn, but I only have four sanctum creatures, so I don't really see the use of that. But anyway, okay, and then we also have a lot of, uh, I think, great, um, Great action cards, I like them. A little bit overkill on the no damage dealing side, but hey, that's fine. Let's see what we get in our other houses. So now we will have a look at Mars. So here we go. Okay, we start off with a new action card, Entropic Manipulator. So it has a play effect, choose a player. You may redistribute the damage on the creatures that the player controls among that player's creatures. You may cause more damage to a creature than it has power. So this is really cool. You can actually, for example, if he has like Brotnar creatures, which have a lot of power and they are damaged, you can redistribute it to smaller creature, for example, if he has small shadow creatures or whatever, and kill it off and it gives you an amber. This is a really good card, really nice. Okay, then we have a <clears throat> destroy them all play. Destroy an artifact, a creature, and an upgrade. Wow, this is a crazy card. It doesn't give you an amber, it doesn't give any chains, but this is really powerful. But, of course, the, <clears throat> the other side of the coin is the fact that you have to destroy an artifact, a creature, and an upgrade. So you have to do as much as you can. So if you really want to destroy an artifact of your opponent, but he doesn't have any creatures or upgrades, you will have to do it with yourself, right? So. Anyway, I think that's I think that's quite powerful. Okay, then we have an upgrade, containment field. So this is a really cool one. All right, containment field. So after this creature is used, destroy it. So that's a really cool upgrade. So the idea is that you play this on um, a creature of your opponent, of course. You don't want to put it on one of your own, unless maybe it's like um, something that gives you amber, like a dust temper or whatever. Um, but generally it could be a really powerful upgrade to, to, to destroy creatures of your opponent. You can use it once, but then that's the end of it. So I like it, it's a good upgrade. Then we have an artifact, an Amber Conduction Unit. It's an item and it says after an enemy creature reaps, if it is the first time a creature has reaped this turn, stun it. So that's really powerful. There are, there are a few other cards that do something when your opponent's creatures reap, right? So that's really nice. I really like this artifact. I think it's really good. Okay, then we have um, a creature that we know for a long time, the Ixlix Dominator, a taunt, and it enters place stunt, right? So we know this one. Nothing special going on. We have a Vesema Thing Drone, uh, also one of uh, the uh, Call of the Archon uh, creatures. Reap, you may archive a friendly creature or artifact from play. 
so that's nice. Then we have a mother gun, so another nice artifact in this deck. So when you reveal any number of Mars cards from your hands, deal damage to a creature equal to the number of Mars cards revealed this way. So I really like this one, good one. Ooh, and this is nice. We have a Mind Worm. So this is one of the cards that was actually spoiled in uh, one of the articles. It's a one power creature, but it's elusive. Also check that it's a beast creature, right? It's not like um, it's a robot or a marchant or whatever, it's a beast. Before fight, the creature Mind Worm fights, deals damage equal to its power to each of its neighbors. So that is, that's like massively crazy. Um, again, think about Brobnar, think about, um, for example, a Lollop the Titanic, the 11 power Brobnar creature. 11 damage to each of his neighbors. That's crazy. I really enjoy this one. I think it's so thematic for Mars and I think it's an awesome card and the, the, the art is also amazing. It's like, it's again a sanctum creature. That's like something, this is almost something like out of a, a Lovecraft story or something. It's really nice, awesome. Okay, so those are three creatures. Then we have another action card. It gives you an amber, Mars first. Ready and use a friendly Mars creature. That's nice. It's like these other cards that we had before, like uh, what is it, Squawker or Soft Landing, all that kind of stuff. Okay, then we have another creature, a Glixel, a Glixel Proliferator. When it reaps, if the Proliferator is on a flank, archive a Mars card from your discard pile. So this is really cool. This is what I meant with like. In previous uh, tweets and Instagram posts that I did, I mentioned that um, battleline um, aware creatures are going to be very important, very prominent in the new set. And this is what you see. It wants to be on a flank. If it's on a flank, you can archive a Mars card for, from your discard pile, right? So you can take back your, your Mars first or whatever. So that is really interesting, right? So actually you could play it, you could... Uh, use this one ready and use the friendly creature and then get it back or something all right so that's four creatures then we have the collector worm wow okay this one was also featured i think it's a two power five armor creature so that's crazy right it's five armor fight archive the creature collector worm fights if that creature leaves your archives uh, put it into its owner's hand instead so that's really nice you can actually start indeed collecting right it looks like a worm or something like in in the alien movies that's what it reminds me of. And now we have our final card on Mars, and that's an action. It's a Carpet Floxon. Gives you an Amber, and if you play it, if there are no friendly creatures in play, you deal four damage to each creature. So if you have no board control whatsoever, you can use this to wipe the board clean. Really powerful and very thematic, and in line with previous cards that we have seen for Mars. All right, so let's do a quick recap. We have in total, one, two, three, four, five Mars creatures. I like them a lot. It's an excellent dominator. That's fine. It's a Vesema Thing Drone. I don't really care about that. It has the ability to archive, but I don't think that's really interesting to archive things that are in play. We have the Mindworm, which is really good for control, board control, the proliferator to archive things from your Mars cards from your discard pile, and a collector worm. So that seems that seems really nice, right? Okay, then I'm really glad about the artifacts. I think a mother gun is always good and then an amber conduction unit, right? Which will give you some control uh, with stuns. The containment field upgrade is a really powerful uh, um, way to get rid of annoying creatures. And then of course these uh, action cards, Carpet Flaxem, the Mars first one, destroy them all which is really good, and an Entropic Manipulator. So I think there are some really nice Mars cards in there. Okay, so let's now go through the last part of this deck. And that's Logos. So we start out with Transposition Sandals. I believe this one, this, this one were also in um, Call of the Archon. So it's an upgrade, gives you an Amber, and the creature on which you play this upgrade gains action, swap this creature, with another friendly creature in the battle line. You may, you may use that other creature this turn. 
Interesting. Okay, let's see what we have else. We have an Harland Mind Log. That's also an Archon one. Take control of an enemy flank creature until Harland Mind Log leaves play. So this is interesting again because people are going to put particular creatures on a flank or exactly not on a flank. So this this could be a very interesting card in this set, I think. Ooh, I've never seen this one before. A Seismo Entangler. It's an artifact and it has an action. Choose a house. During your opponent's next turn, creatures of the chosen house cannot be used to reap. So that's really good. If you have an opponent with a very strong board control, right, and you are afraid that he's just gonna reap six times, you can use the Seismo Entangler. Really nice and the art is really beautiful. Wow. I like this one. It's a good artifact. Some really nice artifacts in this deck, actually. Another artifact, a quantum finger trap. So it gives you an amber. Wow, look at this art. And there's an action. Swap the positions of two creatures in a battle line. So that could also be the one of your opponent. I think this is extremely powerful artifact because, as I said before, in Age of Ascension, it's all about location aware. Uh, creatures right battle line awareness is really important so if you have a way to disrupt that I think that's really powerful this is gonna be a very strong artifact in my opinion okay then we have a Zix researcher I really like these guys they were also mentioned in one of the articles I really like them they have this this theme rocket vibe of Pokemon right you've got Zix researcher a director and so on Okay. So his playability says um, archive the top card of your deck or the top card of your discard pile. So this is really interesting and actually, um, yeah, you could do some really, really cool stuff with this, right? We have another one. We have two Zix researchers. Awesome. Do we have a third one? No. Okay. So we have two Zix researchers. I like them. We already have three creatures going on here. We've got an upgrade and we've got two artifacts. Okay. So let's continue. We've got a four power Titan Librarian. That's a new one. At the end of your turn, if Titan Librarian is not on a flank, archive a card. Again, location aware. So if it's not on a flank, archive a card. You want to have it in the middle. So that's interesting. Again, stuff that has to do with archiving. You've got two of those. But of course, if you have these, you also need creatures to put around them, right? But I think that's not really a problem. Then we have a Professor Sutterkin. It's only two power, but when it reaps, draw a card for each friendly Logos creature. That could be massive. I mean, you've got five creatures alone here, so if you reap for each friendly Logos creature, then you get six cards. That, that could be crazy. Wow. Okay. Then we have an Igor. Hmm. So it's a cyborg with playability. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Add one to your hand and discard the others. I like that. That's a really neat effect. I really like the new effects in this set. I'm really excited about it. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Then we have um, an action, a Cutthroat Research. It gives you an Amber and it says play. Steal two Amber if your opponent has eight or more. To steal data from one person is plagiarism. To steal from many is research. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. I myself, I work in research, so that's good. That's quite funny. Okay. And then uh, we have one final. So that's actually only action card up till now. So we had an upgrade, an action card, we've got some uh, creatures and artifacts. And then we've got another creature, Archimedes, elusive. Each of Archimedes' neighbors gains destroyed archive this creature. So you have crazy amount of archive possibilities in this deck. I'm really excited to see how this one plays. I mean, I didn't really like um, all of the weird artifacts. I think the Sanctum part is a bit weird, but I like the Logos and the Mars part, especially the Logos part that looks really awesome. We have got a lot of creatures going on here and they're all really powerful. I especially like the two um, artifacts. I think they're really good. And then uh, we've got one action and one upgrade. So really interested to see how this one plays out. All right, so that's it for this first deck. Now let's open the second deck um, in our starter box, right? So let's see what we've got here. Let's open it up. There we go. Okay, let's see. Okay, here it is. Ooh, okay. 
So it's called Axel. Bad hand, ugly down. I like it. Bad hand. Cool. So it's this. Ooh, I'm very interested for this. Brotnar. So my my very first deck that I opened in the sealed uh, tournament um, also had Brotnar, and I, I'm really digging Brotnar. And then we have Logo. So let's see what uh, what we have in the house here. All right. So let's see. Here we go. Let's remove the last card. There we have it. Okay, let's see. Let's start with logos. We ended with logos in the previous one. Let's go with logos here. Okay, so we start out with a two power creature, a mutant, called Replicator, Reap. Trigger the Reap effect of another creature in play as if you control that creature. That creature does not exhaust. That's cool, awesome, awesome creature. Okay, then we have a, another creature called the Xenia. Play. Your opponent discards each of their archived cards. You gain one amber for each card discard this way. So that could be really awesome. That could be really powerful. Especially as you saw that in the previous deck that I had, that there was like a lot of archiving power. So you can do some really crazy stuff with that. Because you also, you discard it and you gain amber for it. That's crazy. Okay, here we have another Seismo Entangler, like we've discussed before. You can choose a house and during your opponent's next turn, creature of the chosen house cannot be used to reap. Looks like a really good artifact. Okay, we've got an upgrade, a backup copy. Gives you an amber and it says that this creature gains destroyed, put this creature on top of your deck. It's like, um, I, I forgot the name of the Logos card that uh, when it's destroyed it just goes back to your, the top of your deck. So this is an upgrade version of that. Alright. Let's see, then we have another Titan Librarian. So we've seen that one before. If it's not on the flank you archive a card. Nice one. Then we have an action card that gives you an amber and it's called Poke. Deal one damage to an enemy creature. If this damage destroys that creature, draw cards. That's nice. That's really in line with the the other type of uh, action cards that we have seen before for um, logos. Then we have a Library of Babel. We know that one. That's one from Call of the Archons. So just an action draw card. We have another Library of Babel. Wow, three artifact. Really artifact heavy up till now. Okay, Cutthroat Research. Steal two amber if your opponent has eight or more amber and it gives you an amber. So that's nice. Then we have another Cutthroat Research. Steal two of an opponent's eight or more. So that, yeah, the, the if he has eight or more, maybe you can't always use it, but that's what the Amber is for, right? So then we have a Binate Rupture, also an action card. It's an alpha, so you can only play this card before doing anything else this step. Each player gains Amber equal to the Amber in their pool. So basically you double the Amber in uh, both players' pool. Looks awesome but dangerous effect to play, I think. Then we have Archimedes, so uh, each of his neighbors gains destroyed archive this creature. So that's quite nice. All right, so nothing too fancy. I must say that in the previous deck, I liked um, logos more. I think there were some really cool creatures in there, but I think that you have quite a lot of card draw here, some cool upgrade and nice creatures. So overall, it's fine. So now let's go to house this of this um, of this deck. So here we have it. The very first one is one that we know very well. It's from Call of the Archons. Your opponent must pay one amber in order to use an artifact, Tentacus, right? Okay, we know that one. We've got two of those. Okay, we also have a Poltergeist. So this is really artifact control heavy. That's nice. So. You gain an amber and poltergeist use an artifact controlled by any player as if it were yours then you destroy that artifact that's a good one okay here we have a very nice artifact called library of the damned which will allow you to archive cards so that's that's a good one Ooh, this is one of the new ones okay a blood shard imp after a creature reaps its controller must sacrifice it wow this is really nice wow okay so it's it's diamond, okay, and look at this, look at this art, wow, that is really nice. And I really like this ability, after a creature reaps, its controller must sacrifice. This 
completely belongs in the line of extremely annoying imps and in, uh, in, in this house I really like it this is really nice design okay then we also have a yurk so I really wanted the yurk I, I I really think they're really cool they have very nice art and the playability is amazing so choose and discard a card from your hand really powerful if you have some dead cards in your hand which you always have so that's nice oh yeah I was collecting the creatures on this side so here we have um, library of the damned poltergeist and here are some creatures okay Ooh, what is this tasmal it's an elusive imp reap choose a house your opponent cannot choose that house as their active house on their next turn so it's like a restringentus in call of the archons but with a with a reap ability wow this art is so amazing i really like the art of this game and especially this this is really awesome tasmal all right cool creature misery exploit it's an action card play gain one amber for each damaged enemy creature this could be really nasty okay then we have exhume gives you an amber when you play it, choose a creature in your discard pile. You may play that creature as if it belonged to the active house and was in your hand. Wow, so you could actually take one of the Brobnar or Logos creatures in this deck and play it again. Cool. I like that one. Okay, so now we have Call the Weak. Destroy the least powerful enemy creature. Could be interesting if you have those like this small elusive creatures that are really pesky. This is nice. And look at the art again, people. Come on. This is amazing. Okay, then we have an Ember Imp. Another of those extremely annoying ones. So after a creature reaps, stun it. That's just crazy annoying. So you have... You've got a creature that when it reaps, its controller must sacrifice it. And this one, after a creature reaps, stun it. And that is crazy. But of course, you must see that this is a creature that's not enemy creature so it could also be your own creatures so you have to be careful with that okay and we've got two of those okay wow so those are some really annoying creatures and how's this all right so a lot of creatures and how's this some really annoying ones like the blood chart imp the ember imp tesmal yeah really annoying and quite some artifact control so yeah i think i like this one i think that this house is quite good so now let's have a look at the final house, Brobner. I'm really excited about this one. So we start off with a three power creature called the War Grumbus. And it has a fight and a reap ability that basically says ready and fight with a neighboring giant. Okay, only the Brobner would look at Grumbus and say, yeah, I'll tame that. <laughs> okay, look at that art, really nice. And it appears to be, it has a star, so I, I guess that's a rare card. Wow, these look really nice. Oh, uh, wow, and we've got two of them. That's really nice. So we've got two War Grumpuses, and of course we have a Grumpus Tamer. So it says Reap. Search your deck and discard pile for a War Grumpus. Reveal it and add it to your hands. Then shuffle your deck. Really awesome. So when you've got this one out, you can try to get these ones out. Really nice. It's like this uh, bear flute and, and ancient bear mechanic in Untamed that we had before. I like it. I dig it. Okay, so here we have Little Rapskull. That's a new one. So it's an elusive creature. Creatures must fight when used, if able. And they said I was annoying. Pingle who annoys. <laughs> oh my god. So I once had a guy who... Um, in, in on the Crucible Online and I, I played Pingaloo Noise. He played a creature and Pingaloo Noise <laughs> killed the creature and then he left. So he was really pissed. So this one is even more annoying. Creatures must fight when used if able. That is crazy and it's elusive. So that's really good. Alright, so we have a Blood of the Titans. We know that one. It gives an Amber and gets you 5 power. So that's quite good. Then we have Into the Fray. So play for the remainder of the turn, a friendly Propner creature gains a fight, ready this creature. So that's crazy, so you can actually keep on fighting with that creature, as long as it survives. We've got two of those, so that's nice. Then we've got another artifact, action, ready and fight with a friendly creature, got a lot of commands. Okay, we've got a Ganger Chieftain, so that's another creature. You may ready and fight with a neighboring creature, so that's nice. We've got a Coward's Ants, very good board removal, destroy each undamaged creature, but you gain three chains. That's fine, we know that one from Call of the Archons. 
And now we have Bramo. So I think Bram Bramo, I've got uh, three Bramos in my, uh, my first deck and I really like them. Um, deal two damage to each enemy flank creature. It's short for Bramunition, Dodger asks. <laughs> All right, for power one uh, armor creature. And then the final one, that's a one to punch. Stun an enemy creature. If that creature was already stunned, destroy it instead. So there's not many stun effects going on here on Brodnar, but remember that here in this we had um, we had two Amber Imps, so when it reaps, you can stun it, so that's quite nice. All right, I think this deck is, is okay. It doesn't seem like a killer deck at this point, but uh, who knows? I mean, we just all have to learn. So I'm very excited to try out these decks. I want to say, I want to give special thanks to um, Asmodee Netherlands department because they uh, made this possible, right? They um, gave me a starter deck, a starter box, to do an unboxing video so uh, a lot of thanks to them and thanks for watching and see you guys later bye